Hello and welcome to the You Felty Thing introductory video. Having watched so many lovely video blogs, I've decided to give it a go myself, so please bear with me whilst I get used to working with the camera. Hello and welcome to You Felty Thing. I'm Nikki Small and I opened the shop here on the 19th of March this year and we're mostly stocking hand-dyed yarns and felting supplies and spinning supplies and basically all things woolly. Um, I'm a bit of a wool addict myself, which is how come I ended up setting up the shop. It was either that or buy another house to put everything in. So I'm also going to show you some of the things that I've been creating, uh, some of my current projects, that sort of thing. So I'll, let's start with a tour of the shop. So bear with me whilst I turn the camera around. So this is You Felty Thing. So we have a selection of bits that I've made and then we have lots and lots of fibre and we have different sections for different hand dyers. So let me talk you round everybody. Up here we have Abercairn, uh, which is hand dyed by Desiree. She is based in both Scotland and the US and she does some gorgeous things. Down here we have Cat and Sparrow, uh, which is partially sold out at the moment. Um, Rachel from Cat and Sparrow does some gorgeous squishy fibres, but she also makes these stunning bats, which you can see here, which are great for both felting and spinning. And going around this way, I have a selection of more commercial or bigger branded wool. So I've got some Super Chunky from World of Wool and I've got some Noro and some um, Aracania undyed skeins and also some of these Juniper Moon Farm skeins as well. We've got some kits also by Abercairn. And up here we have Shani's Yarnies up at the top. She's recently joined us. Next shelf down we have Bear in Sheep's Clothing um, along with some new goodies in the middle here which she's only just sent me so I haven't had time to hang up. Um, I have some lovely patterns. I've got Wiccan Mum's so Winnick Mum's Super Socks book, which is brilliant for anybody wanting to learn. Got lots of patterns by the Woolly Tangle. And then we've got Woolly Wumpkins, Ammonites and Seafoam shawl as well. Um, and the next row down is Woolly Wumpkins hand dyed yarns. Underneath her, we have Woolly Mama. And these are really squishy, soft lovely yarns down the bottom here. If we go over to the right, I've got Shonach yarns. Now these are dyed in Ireland by a French lady who uses plant dyes. And I, I especially love this dark green one here, which is actually dyed with red onions. And then going up, we have Trudy Hooked along with the sock drawer book and on the hook books. Um, Verity is lovely and has been very, very supportive with the, the setting up of the shop. Um, and I'm looking forward to another delivery from her very shortly. Now going over this way, up at the top, I have some lovely local Shetland fibre. Um, from a lady that I met through the Abergelly Guild of Spinners, Dyers and Weavers. And then I have some British yarn um, from West Yorkshire Spinners and also um, UK Alpaca. Now these aren't hand dyed but they are there to complement the, uh, the hand dyed yarn so that you can use them for contrasting cuffs or that sort of thing so that you can sort of extend your more expensive skein a little bit. Uh, down the bottom is my section um, with my hand dyed yarns, um, slightly squidged in in places at the moment. 
um, and varying from four ply up to chunky weight and I've got some cashmere loop in the middle there as well. And over here up at the top we have temporal spin. Now Rianne lives in West Wales and all of her um, yarns are dyed with a sci-fi inspired title uh, which is really good fun. Then I've got a selection of mini skeins, sock blanks and sock kits uh, from a selection of different dyers. I've got um, Woolly Wumpkins again, Hey J, Dina's Home of Craft and Hooking Marvellous in there as well. And the mini skeins are from um, Manos de Uruguay. Next down I've got lots of lovelies from All Wool That Ends Wool including a new delivery of these which are merino yak silk singles and they're just gorgeous to knit with and crochet with. This example shawl has been crocheted carefully by my friend Wendy and it's a really lovely example of how some of the yarn crochets up. Heading over this way a bit we have Hey J Yarns up at the top there and uh, she's also recently joined the shop and then in these boxes we have Nitta Scarlet who is a lovely lady called Kath who lives on Anglesey and in the middle here we have some more squishy goodness from Hooking Marvellous um, including these this lovely alpaca singles here. Now, next row down, we have some lovely kits from the Woolly Tangle. So she's written the patterns herself and, and has supplied all the wool and things necessary to create them. And this lovely yarn bowl is handmade by a lady called Krithia, who I also met through the Abregelli Guild. And down the bottom here, we've got Dina's Home of Crafts. And she's, she has more wool than I've been able to hang up at the moment. I need to put in some more hooks <laughs> on her shelf down here. Um, so we've got some other lovely colours in the back there, which will be hung up shortly. Now, if I stand up again, um, I've been, um, I, I really like shawls. And so I've been making all sorts of shawls recently. Um, so this one here is um, Gale, otherwise known as Night Song. It's a free Ravelry pattern, and I I knitted it a long time ago. But sort of, it got put in a bag because there were so many ends I needed to sew in, um, and so it, it finally got sorted and blocked just a few weeks ago, and I'm really chuffed with it. So it sat on Dwinwen, my uh, model at the moment. Um, behind her, you can see I've got other shawls that I've both knitted and felted. Um, and I have some example shawls from Abercairn there as well. Going around this way, some of it's a little bit messy because I run a lot of craft classes in here. So I need somewhere to keep all of my gubbins. Um, so but I also... I always have my spinning wheel in the shop with me as well and I'm currently, I'm, I'm learning, very much learning. So at the moment I'm just making, I've, I've been making bats and so I am, not bats, row legs. And so I'm slowly but surely actually getting them spun um, oh. <laughs> and unspinning them apparently also as well. Um, right, so over here I have some hand-dyed fibres from Knitter Scarlet. These, um, and also a couple of bits from me as well. Um, these are non-wool fibres, so we've got things like um, soybean and silk and banana in there as well. Um, we've got all sorts of different felting needles and a few different knitting needles and things. I have pre-loved patterns, 
Um, I've got all sorts of eyes and bits for making little felted animals and things. And then we get onto the felting fibres. So I've got little mini bags of just odds and ends of a couple of grams. I've got sort of natural colours. I've got hand dyed fibres, again by Knitter Scarlet there. Um, and then I've got a variety of blends and plain colours and accent fibres, including silks and, um, yeah, hand-dyed mulberry silks and things like that. Um, and I have lots of larger quantities of fibre. Again, these are less usual fibre, so I've got pearl fibre and... Um, rami and silks and soybeans and things and then I've got wools and blends and then over here I have the more colourful <laughs> section um, and these are all in sort of about a hundred gram hanks um, mainly aimed at spinners and things and then last but not least over here I have handmade project bags um, which are made by the Woolly Tangle, and they are really lovely. So, um, let me show you some of the things that I've been making. Um, I also run felting classes as well, so one of the classes that, we, that I'm having over the next few weeks is a felted flower class. We're also doing a resists class for how to make these felted bowls and things. Um, I'm also, next Wednesday, I'm doing a felted fairies class, which is making these little fairies. So, yeah, I, I, have, a, I have a good go at all sorts, really. Um, so, I'm just going to take you back. So, if I just show you the room in general, you can see that we're set, we have... We're set up to have classes and that sort of thing. And we also have lots of knit and natter groups. And um, I also run kids uh, craft education classes for home ed kids as well. Um, so on the table over here, this is my impressionist shawl, which is from Curious Handmade. Uh, and it was a mystery knit along earlier in the year. Um, I used a mixture of yarns from the shop. I used uh, the purple here was a Merino Silk Singles blend dyed by Abercairn. And both the green and this, this grey pinky colour were both um, the Merino Yak Silk Singles by All Wool the Tens Wool. Um, so I'm having... Having, I had lots of fun doing that. Um, I'm also in the process of trying to design my own shawl at the moment. So I'm just using some West Yorkshire spinners just to just as a sort of a test knit for it at the moment. Um, but uh, it's it's butterfly themed, so the um, the the pattern will become clearer as it as you go. Uh, as you go through it, but uh, it is eventually going to be sort of butterfly shaped. So, um, this is this is where I like to spend my time. I have my nice big comfy armchair uh, in the shop and another one down the other end for, for visitors as well. Um, but I thought I would show you what I'm making at the moment. Um, assuming I can untangle it all. Um, I, my project bag is woolly tangle, um, as seen in the shop. And at the moment I'm knitting with this gorgeous yarn here, which is a merino silk blend. And it's been dyed by Temporal Spin and it was part of their um, yarn club Um and it was it's called first contact and it's based on star on star trek so you've got sort of the the dark red of the federation uniforms in there and green for romulans and it's good fun 
So I thought I needed a suitably um, sci-fi inspired pattern to go with it as well. And so I am making Don't Panic, um, which is, if I can find the first page of it, Um, let me show you that. It's a paid for Ravelry pattern and it was originally a mystery knit along. Um, and it is by Nim Teasdale and she wrote it last year. And it's a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy themed, uh, themed shawl, which I'm very excited about because I love Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's been one of my favourite things since I was about eight and my mum first sat me in front of the old television series. Um, so yeah, so I'm busy working my way through that at the moment but I, want, I wouldn't have had enough of this because I only had one skein in the sock club um, and so I decided that I would team it with some different yarns as well. So I've started if I hold that up and the the first colour that I've used is called Witch's Brew and that's knit that's by Knitter Scarlet and I'm going to finish it up with the same purple that I used in my Impressionist shawl because I loved it so much I had to buy the other skein um, and it's this gorgeous dark purpley blend um, by Abracairn. Um, so it's going to it's going to fade down through um, and I'm not I'm not sure where the color will where I'll change the color yet it'll sort of depend on how far I get with the pattern before the, <laughs> before the um, first contact runs out. Um, the other one I've been knitting recently is this one which I've not long finished and blocked uh, it's called Bit of Love and my, I'm afraid my brain is momentarily um, failing me as to who wrote it but I will add that in to the video later. Um, and the yarn that I've used was dyed by Shonak Yarns um, down in, over there in the shop um, which are the plant dyed ones. So I've got this is berries and the brown is walnut. Um, so what else have I been doing? Um, I've also been, because I've been learning to hand spin and I'm not awfully good at it yet, but I went to a Navajo plying workshop um, at the local guild a couple of Sundays ago and it was brilliant. And it meant that I wanted to try making a gradient yarn um, so that it would, it would start at one colour and slowly fade through to another because the wonderful thing about Navajo plying is that instead of having to have two strands of yarn and bringing them both together and twisting them together to ply you're actually you're using just the one strand of yarn but you're doing um, a, a series of slip knots as you go so that you're plying it with itself as it goes so that the colours change as they should do through the yarn. So this was my first attempt and I did the Navajo plying sort of on the go. There is, a, there is another step that you can add in where you sort of, you do the slip knots first and wind it round a tennis ball or something similar. And then you spin it afterwards. And in hindsight, I should have done that. Um, but I was a bit too excited and decided that I'd just, oh, it'll be fine, I'll give it a go. Um, so it meant that some of the some of the plying is not awfully neat um, and it hasn't turned out brilliantly, but that was my finished article, uh, finished object. So it started green and ended up raspberry and sort of faded through. Um, and so I've sort of I knitted it into just a very simple cowl um, and if I take off my shawl I'll show you. It's not the prettiest of objects but it is going to keep me warm in the winter so it's just like that. So I'm for one of the first things that I've ever spun and made for myself I'm 
reasonably happy with it, to be honest. Um, so I'm trying to do another um, gradiated skein this time. Um, again, fading from a sort of a raspberry colour through to a sort of a green, but it's going through a, a minky browny colour in the middle as well. And I'm hoping to make a much longer skein with it. Um, so fingers crossed that'll that'll go quite well and I'll have that to show you next time. Um, hope fingers crossed also with a finished hitchhiker's shawl as well. So I didn't want to r ramble on too much because this is the first time I've I've done a video blog um, but I hope that you've enjoyed having a quick tour of the shop and that you'll tune in again next time. Nice to meet. Bye.